Welcome back to Upfront, and we're talking with the Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate, Russ Feingold. Uh, I mentioned before the break that you've been running an ad. It talks about your plan for fighting ISIS, and it talks about cutting off their oil supplies and their cash supplies, and it talks about use of special forces, um, increased resources to yep. disrupt terrorist cells, better human intelligence. There are some people out there who would say that sounds a lot like what we're already doing. That's what the Obama administration's policy is. Is it a status quo policy you're talking about to address the threat of ISIS? Oh, no, but the first thing I want to say is that there's nothing more important than making sure organizations like this are destroyed. These are monstrous people. Uh, and it includes not just ISIS, but Al-Qaeda and a number of the organizations around the world, like Boko Haram, who are part of sometimes an interrelated network, sometimes not. So let's be clear that we should be beyond politics on this issue. This shouldn't be used as a political battering ram. We should all be together to try to solve the problem. And when it comes to ISIS, the way to destroy them is to choke them off. And this is something I've been concerned about, not only when I was in the Senate, but since I've been in the Senate, working hard to understand the interconnections and what actually works and doesn't work. At the same time, Senator Johnson miss, missed 50 to 60 percent of the hearings related to this early in his time in the United States Senate. So what have I proposed? I propose that we go after ISIS by cut, cutting off their ability to function. And yes, the administration has started on some of these things, but it needs to be intensified. For example, cutting off their ability to make money off of oil. We have to destroy their oil facilities and their ability to transport oil, not only in the area where they have the caliphate between Syria and Iraq, but also in places like Libya, in CERT. And yes, the administration is now in the process of trying to do some of that. Do you think we're winning in the fight against ISIS? You know what? I don't think that's something that's clear yet. I think what's clear is that we're beginning to cut off much of their territory. We have taken back Fallujah, which is great, but we cannot fool ourselves that this is all. We have to do more. We have to make sure that we cut off their finances, their ability to get cash, cut off their uh, ability to get cash through the Internet. We need to cut off their ability to get arms. Uh, particularly through the Turkish border, and that's where the instability in Turkey is an issue. And we need to have more human intelligence, and this is where I think I've taken a stand that is actually much stronger than the administration, much stronger than Senator Johnson. We need to increase the human intelligence, in other words, the, the, the espionage that we have within that area so we can find the leaders and, and knock them off. And the difference here between me and Senator Johnson is he has no plan at all, other than one you've heard him say, which is he says, let's send 100,000 troops into the region and basically see what happens. That is a failed strategy. This is an intelligence strategy, one that involves putting together all our resources. And there's one other piece, Mike, that's so crucial. You know, Senator Johnson hasn't even lifted a finger to give the president the authority for Congress to give the president additional authority to fight ISIS. He's chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, and he hasn't even touched it. And we need to make sure that we put pressure on countries like Saudi Arabia to stop funding extremists all over the world. They are funding extremists. So these are specific uh, proposals, some of which relate to what the president is doing, but some of which are new and, and very strong. Final question, uh, are you, and, and we'll speak politically here, are, are you politically vulnerable on this issue, though? The, the Johnson people seem to feel that you are. Your vote against the Patriot Act, some votes on military spending. They're trying to make you seem like you're soft on this national security issue. Are you vulnerable on that? This is what's sad about this issue. This should be beyond politics. This should be all Americans working together. We know when George Bush gave that first speech after 9-11, I happened to shake his hand in the House chamber. And I said, Mr. President, together we will do this. That's the spirit we should have here. And I think I've made the right calls in the past by voting against the Patriot Act on this, but also having been recognized by the intelligence community after five years on the intelligence committee for having been one of the strongest voices in going after terrorist groups and learning about terrorist groups in Africa. So I feel good. Uh, then I'm ready, if I'm elected, to go back and, and get serious about this instead of just using it for political points, as Senator Johnson does, jumps up on Fox News every time there's a tragedy, but he has no plan, and I do. Former Senator Russ Feingold, the Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate. We appreciate your time today. Thanks very much for being Pleasure, with us. Pleasure, Mike. And you can see my entire interview with Russ Feingold, including questions about the Affordable Care Act, on our website, the upfront section of WISN.com. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, has the latest on legal action over Wisconsin's voter ID law. You'll find that in other election-related news on the election blog at WISPolitics.com. Coming up next on Upfront, we'll take a closer look at the race for president in Wisconsin. How does what's happening now compare to four years ago? And what might that tell us about November?